I'm Dr. Len Lichtenfeld. I'm Deputy Chief Medical Officer at the American Cancer Society National Home Office in Atlanta, Georgia. Clearly we've made tremendous progress in cancer, uh, but this year has been uh, uh, exceptionally interesting for a number of reasons. Earlier this year, the international agency that classifies materials as to whether or not they cause cancer issued a report giving cell phones a 2B classification. Now, what 2B means is that uh, they concluded cell phones may cause cancer. And I think we have to bear in mind that uh, just because it's classified as 2B doesn't mean that it definitely causes cancer. Uh, it's always prudent to be concerned, and if you are concerned, there are steps you can take. So, for example, you don't have to hold a cell phone to your head. Uh, you can use another device, whether it be a wire from your ear to the cell phone, or perhaps a Bluetooth device, which emits a lot less radiation. Another story that was important in 2011 was the uh, rejection by the FDA of Avastin for use in the treatment of metastatic breast cancer. The, the, the number of women that it helped was far outweighed by the risks and the harms of the drug. We have to remember that Avastin is a drug that has been approved for other cancers such as uh, brain cancer, kidney cancer, and lung cancer, as well as colon cancer. Uh, and we hope that in situations where Avastin has proven helpful to women who are taking it, that insurance companies will continue to pay for it. Beginning a number of years ago, the National Cancer Institute, in conjunction with other organizations, including the American Cancer Society, started a clinical trial to see whether or not CT scans can reduce deaths in heavy smokers. And this year, we found out that, in fact, it can reduce deaths in that particular group. So what we know is that in a group of people who were heavy smokers between the ages of 55 and 74, CT scans reduce deaths. We don't know whether that's the case in other people who may have been occasional smokers in the past. One of the major stories towards the end of 2011 was the announcement by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force that they were going to make a blanket recommendation against screening for the early detection of prostate cancer with the PSA test. Uh, now, it's important to remember that that was a, a preliminary recommendation. They haven't made their final recommendation. One of the stories in 2011 that flew under the radar screen for a long time was the increasing number of drugs that are in short supply here in the United States, and in fact, in various places throughout the world. There are a lot of reasons why that has happened and it's a very complex situation for which there's no simple fix. But there's no question that the number of drugs, the number of cancer drugs in short supply is impacting the treatment of cancer patients and potentially impacting their lives. One of the interesting highlights of 2011 has been the fact that the FDA approved several new drugs for cancer. And among those drugs, were uh, uh, drugs that are uh, particularly effective in treating diseases where we haven't been so successful in the past. So for example, we now have new drugs in the treatment of melanoma and new drugs in the treatment of lung cancer, which are very specifically targeted to certain patients who have abnormalities uh, in the genetic makeup of their, of their tumors. And what that means is we're going to open up many, many more opportunities for cancer treatment and we're going to be able to move new drugs through the process so much more quickly. Death from cancer is, is, a, is a loss of a loved one, for a family, for friends, for colleagues, and the impact that that has on all of us is very real. In particular this year, Steve Jobs passed away from cancer. And I think it goes without saying that he was one of the most recognized people in the world who had contributed so much. He was somebody who accomplished so much even when he was in the, in the throes of cancer near the end of his life. So to everyone who has lost someone, our, our, our hearts go out, our sympathy go out to you. Uh, and to know that the loss of someone like Steve Jobs is merely uh, in a sense representative of the losses that many of us ex have experienced, unfortunately, over this past year.